A couple of treasure hunters entered the spookiest of houses in the lovely little town of Galmanti. The house is full of treasure, but legend claims that they are guarded by two notorious ghosts, Kiri and Leary. The treasure hunters need to collect the treasures without getting caught by the ghosts, but is that possible? Let's just say this, no one has ever escaped the haunted house of Galmanti. Crafters, welcome to the game tutorial of the 6th board game that Crafts has made and this one is the spookiest of them all. We are welcoming you to an abandoned and haunted house which will be the battlefield of the game. On one side there's the treasure hunters who are trying to steal the treasures from the house while on the other end the ghosts will try to haunt them and prevent them from stealing the treasures. Both the team will be getting their own powers to play with but to use them in the perfect time is how one can win the game. So before I dive into how to play the game, let us get familiar with the components of the board game The Haunted House of Galmandi. So here we have the gaming board which shows the plan view of the abandoned house. See the creepy passages full of dirt, spider webs, giant holes and whatnot. A classic haunted house that is. Uh, you can see the dots across the house. These are the spots where the players will be stepping in. Okay, next we have two dices. Uh, the dices will be rolled very differently in this game. I will get to it very soon. Then we have the manual of course, um, this, this has to be by far the most detailed manual that we have made. All the rules and instructions are explained on it. Alright, then we have the four gaming pieces, two treasure hunters, Creeper and Grubby, and the two ghosts, Kiri and Liri. Then we have this treasure hunters board, nine treasure gems, six power cards, six health coins of treasure hunters, and the ghost traps. We usually play with 2 blood trap and 2 skeleton trap but we have provided 3 for each so that it makes your game experience even more intense. Now the game can be played by 4 players, 2 treasure hunters and 2 ghosts. Now if you are a treasure hunter, your objective is simple. There will be a total of 9 treasures throughout the house, among which you need to collect 7 to win the game. Even if one of the two treasure hunters is out of the game, the other treasure hunter can go on and continue the game and try to earn 7 treasures. The treasure hunters will step on these treasures and once they do, they will collect the treasure on their treasure hunters board and then they will win a power card that they will choose randomly. The power card contains special powers that will help the hunters in the game. The treasure hunters will have 3 health coins each. Every time a ghost steps on the hunters, they will lose a health coin and will be sent right at the start. If a treasure hunter loses all the health coins, the player dies. Now, if you are a spooky ghost, then your team's objective is to get out of your dungeon and get into the house and then to step into the players in order to snatch their health coins till the treasure hunters run out of health coins. The ghosts will try to make sure the treasures are not stolen, so they will keep driving the treasure hunters away from them and keep snatching their health coins by stepping on them. The ghosts win once both the treasure hunters are out of health coins. Now that we know the objective of the players, let us see how the whole game will go by. At first, let's organize everything, alright? So now on the board, the two yellow squares indicates the starting point of the treasure hunters, while the two red squares indicate the starting point of the ghosts, that is from the dungeon. So let's place them. All the 9 treasures are to be kept at their designated places on the board. You can see the black treasure marked zones across the board. There are 8 places where the 9 treasures are located. Notice how in the ghost's dungeon, there's 2 treasures kept together. So the treasure hunters can literally step here and earn 2 treasures together. But the risk is very high. Well how? Let me explain. So notice how there are dots across the house through which the ghosts or hunters can walk through. You can notice three different colors of the dots. The grey dots are where the treasure hunters are safe. Ghosts cannot step on the grey dots. While on the red dots, both the ghosts and hunters can move and the treasure hunters are in threat as they will lose one health coin if they are stepped on by a ghost. Now there's also black dots right at the ghost's dungeon and if a treasure hunter is stepped on by a ghost in these dots, then the treasure hunter will lose 
two health coils. So it's a high risk, high reward zone for the treasure hunters. Now we got the nine treasures, two hunters and the two ghosts in place. The treasure hunters board will be prepared too with three health coins for each of the players and the six power cards shuffled and placed on the treasure hunters board. Keep in mind that the health coins cannot be transferred among the players. Now every time the treasure hunters win a treasure, they will also win a power card. Now what are the powers that you can have on these power cards? Firstly, you can snatch a health coin. Say you have lost health coins and, and you are only left with one or two. If you win this power card, then you can snatch the health coin back from the ghost to restore it. Alright, next, you can send one ghost of your choice right at the ghost's starting point. Say you are close to winning the treasure, but the ghost is about to take you down. Use the power card and send him right at the starting point. That way you are free from danger, at least at the given moment. Next, now this is a funny one. You can send a ghost of your choice to the toilet. The ghost will be trapped on the commode until the ghosts roll a 3 on the dice. Once they roll a 3, the trapped ghost can escape and step here. While one ghost is trapped on the commode, the other ghost has to play alone till a 3 comes on the dice. So these are the 3 powers that can be found on the 6 power cards. Once the treasure hunters win a power card, they should keep it a secret till they use it, as a big part of their strategy relies on when they use these powers. But keep in mind, if you are a treasure hunter, you need to use your power card before you roll the dice in your turn. That is the rule. Once the power card is used, it will be put back into the treasure hunter's board facing up. One power card can only be used once. Now that we have placed all the health coins and the power cards on the treasure hunter's board, we go back to our house, where the ghost will strategically place the traps, skeleton trap and the blood trap. If the hunter steps into a skeleton trap, then he or she goes right into the beginning, while if the hunter steps into a blood trap, he or she will lose a health coin. These handy traps cannot be placed consecutively, a gap has to be there. These traps can only be placed on the red colored steps, and once placed they cannot be moved. We recommend ghosts to set them on vital zones like in front of treasures or in any important junctions. The traps may not seem handy at first, but when one treasure hunter dies and the only one hunter remains, these traps can play a big, big role. Now the crucial bit, how can the players move in this game? So here we go, the dice rolling style. For a start, both the dices are to be rolled together by the treasure hunters. Say they have rolled um, 6 and 5, what do they do? Option 1, Grubby can move 6 steps while Creeper moves 5 steps. Option 2, the other way around where Creeper moves 6 steps and Grubby moves 5 steps. Or option 3, where one of these two players moves 11 steps, 6 plus 5, 11 steps. This is where the fun and thrill of the game lies, as both the players try to understand and assess which move shall they take. The same applies for the ghosts as well. Treasure hunters and ghosts can move in any direction they want, but of course they cannot reverse in the middle of a movement. Example, if a ghost rolls a 4 and 6 and you decide one ghost to move 6 steps, he or she cannot take 4 steps forward and then 2 steps backward. It has to be one directional. So choose your direction and then move accordingly. Now then, time for tips. If you are a treasure hunter, start collecting as many treasures as possible before the ghosts come out of the dungeon and into the house. The ghosts will take a while to ascend, so use that moment to grab as many treasures as possible. Don't stack one player in the safe zone, approach with both players together. If one hunter is left with only one health coin and you have the power of snatching a health coin, don't wait up and snatch it from the ghosts to restore the health of the hunter. Um, be clever as to when to use your power cards. If you want to go to the dungeon and fetch the two treasures together, make sure you use the power card of sending the ghost to the toilet to clear your path, provided you have earned the power card of course. 
uh, do not step into the dungeon if you have two health coins or less and if a ghost is nearby since you will most likely be stepped upon and eliminated by the ghost as the black steps are where treasure hunters lose two health coins if attacked by a ghost. So grab as many treasures before the ghosts come out and play as a team to win more treasures. Use the power cards wisely. As you earn more treasures and win power cards, the lesser are the chances of the ghosts to win the game. For the ghosts, make sure to attack the treasure hunters with both the ghosts. Position the traps wisely and make sure that the hunters are pushed towards their starting point. Treasure hunters can steal the first two or three treasures easily, but the rest of them are not so easy to steal. So make sure that they're attacked properly before they go on to win more treasures and hence more power cards. Of course ghosts should protect the dungeon as it has two treasures that can be won by hunters at one go. Two gems, hence two power cards, so you better protect the dungeon if you are a ghost. And keep snatching health coins of the hunters, make them feel helpless. The more dominating you get, the more likely you are to win the game. This is a team game, so always discuss your moves with your teammate so that the best move is taken. From our experience of playing the game many times before, the well coordinated and strategic team has always won. So what are you waiting for? An intense and spooky game is waiting for you. Would you rather be the treasure hunter or the ghost? Let us know in the comments section. The board game is available for order on our website kreosbangladesh.com and it is also available on the Facebook and Instagram handle of crafts. So do place your order. So let's dare step into the haunted house of Gulmandi and see if we can make it out alive.